So now that we've uh, taken a look at pocket base and uh, set up a project, it's time to uh, create a pocket base instance in the cloud using pockethost.io, uh, like we discussed last time. So first up, uh, go to pockethost.io right here. And then all you have to do is enter your email and password, and then choose an instance name for your uh, pocket base. And once you're done, click create. All right, so now uh, once you're done, it should automatically redirect you to uh, your pocket base instance. And then you have some code samples to use right here, the URL, here the URL and then the pocket base. And then there's the admin URL. So you want to click on that right here. And just like last time, you want to enter your email and password and then click create login, create and log in. Boom. As you can see, we are inside pocket base. Now, there's one thing I want to do right here. And that is change the application name from admin to something like, like pocket task. This is the name of our, uh, of our application and click save changes. All right. Now let's get started. First up, uh, you see this code sample right here. Uh, I'm going to click copy. Now back inside VS code, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. It's called lib and inside this folder we are going to uh, type in we're going to create a new file called pocketbase.js inside this file this is where our configuration uh, pocket base configuration uh, will be stored but first we need to install the pocket base um, javascript sdk and to do this all you have to do is type in npm install then pocket base all right so now it is now it's successfully installed, all we have to do is just paste in this uh, URL that we have right here. So abidingwall.pockethost.io. And then we created a new pocket base object that is uh, that basically uses this URL. But before we do so, just go back up here. We need to import pocket base. So I'm gonna type in pocket base, import pocket base from pocket base enter all right and now that we have the setup make sure we just export this client now if we go to our home uh, page right here uh, we're gonna try and um, perform some uh, some HTTP requests, but, but I want to go back to uh, the admin UI so we could uh, use that as our uh, starting point and uh, create our own tasks. All right, so before we do anything, we need to establish a relationship between the user's collection and the task's collection or the to-dos essentially. So let me just zoom in, right? So this is a SQL database. So uh, there has to be some relationship between uh, entities. So we're going to, so first we're going to create a new collection call this tasks create a new field and this field is going to be our uh, title our tasks title and this should not be left empty done and then uh, we can put in a task description for example also a plain text and this one can be uh, empty and now we need to check um, whether or not this task has been completed so we're going to type in completed and make sure it's a boolean value. And last but not least, we need to link every single to-do uh, with our authenticated user. So create new field, and then right here, uh, select relation, user, click on this collection, and then select the user's collection right here, hit done. Now, for this not empty, uh, this should be uh, true, but technically, technically for now, um, because we wanna be able to fetch uh, data without authentication. I'm going to leave this uh, an empty value. So done. And now we can click on create. All right. Now inside, inside the, this task, right, you're going to create a new task. Let's see. Uh, you can buy uh, groceries for the kitchen and complete is going to be false by default. Create. And then we have created a task. Now, we want to be able to fetch this uh, from the front end. So click on this API preview and you're going to get a uh, code snippet of uh, these get requests. But before we do anything, click on this edit collection 
API rules. And essentially, you want to be able to um, allow the, cl uh, the client to uh, perform uh, any action on the on the collection. So all you have to do is just uh, set this custom rule, click on it. Uh, so it's going to be like everyone. I'm going to do the same for each and every one above and then save changes. All right. Now we can fetch uh, data how we want. Now, like I mentioned before, there are two ways you can fetch data inside a pocket base. The first is going to be um, through a REST API that is uh, defined by pocket base. The second is using uh, these me methods from our pocket base uh, client. Um, now I want to show you how to do both. Now I'll show you first how to fetch using uh, the pocket base uh, SDK. So first all you have to do is um, inside this home create a use effect. Now uh, this uh, result that is go going to be returned uh, from pocket base is a promise and I'll show you now. But you can also promise we can also turn, you know, extract this uh, value of the promise after it's fulfilled. I'm going to show you right now. So what I have to do is type in client. And as you can see, lib.pocketbase. I have to do is type in client and then dot collection. And then the name of the collection, which in this case is our tasks. And then we want to select get full list, even though there's only one. But at this point, it doesn't really matter since we only have one item record in the list and put in a then at the end and this res right here this get full list uh, method will return to us an array of records so yeah it's not going to return a promise but there are some methods that do actually return a promise right here so we want to console log uh, this res object so right there you go now I'm gonna I'm going to run the server right now. All right, so we have it up and running. Right click, inspect, console. I just ignore this uh, auto cancel request right here. Uh, it is working as you can see and we, ha and we have an array of records which is like a single record only at this point. But yeah, there it is. Uh, it is working. Let me zoom in. And then we have this uh, collection right here. So we have our co uh, collection ID which is the ID of our uh, database and not uh, our record. This is the record ID at the bottom. And then there's a title. User is empty because you haven't defined one. Now to get rid of this auto cancelled error, all you have to do is go back to this client right here and then type in client. Oh. Oops, sorry. And type in client dot auto cancellation and then set it to false. And at this point you should see the error completely gone. Now I now I just open up the uh, GitHub repository for the JavaScript SDK because I want to direct your attention uh, towards the towards the auto cancellation thing. Now the reason why this occurs is because uh, technically it is an asynchronous um, method. You know every single um, you know fetching records and everything they're all asynchronous, so they just keep on waiting and waiting and waiting. And then uh, once it does uh, execute. Once it does find uh, a value, essentially, once it does return a value, it, it executes this final call and basically cancels all of the above right here. So, so essentially, there are like duplicates for pending requests and, uh, and one of them only gets executed. Now, back inside our project, we want to be able to uh, create a to-do list uh, component. So, so we're going to do exactly just that. Components to-do list.jsx. So this file right here will be stored inside our uh, components folder. Enter and now type in RFC. Uh, and if you're wondering how I got it, uh, it's because I'm using this ES7 extension for uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's very useful and it comes in really handy uh, when working with uh, working with React uh, projects. It's just a productivity booster, I'd say. All right, so now we want to take this use effect and then move it inside our to-do list and then import our uh, client, as you can see. And now inside this home, we can actually right here, to-do list and put in the to-do list component. And we're going to style things later. All right, so now I um, want to be able to map all of the records in map through all of the records uh, inside this array that gets returned to us. So 
For this, we're going to need a use state. So use state hook right here to store um, to store our array. So const and tasks set tasks is equal to use state. By default, it's going to be an empty array. And now we can get rid of this console log right here and put it replace it with a set task call. So um, this will uh, the set task will take in the array and uh, store it inside. All right, now we are ready to loop inside the tasks array. So we're going to put in a pair of curly braces, then tasks dot map. And then for every task, do return a div with the following information. So, all right, so it does return a div. And then this task right here has a title, for example, not a description just yet. And as you can see, I forgot to uh, forgot to import the use effect. So let's do that right now. Put it right here, use effect. All right, as you can see, our title gets rendered no issues at all. So of course, we still want uh, to keep our uh, now, of course, we still want to style it. So first up, we're going to add a class name right here. And this test text is going to be um, maybe two XL. Actually, let's make that three. Now we're going to wrap this inside of another div. And we're going to do that using a wrap uh, right here. So open up the command palette, control shift P, and then type in wrap. And um, as you can see, Emmet has some very useful uh, commands inside this file. So we're going to select the wrap with abbreviation. And then we're going to wrap inside a div class uh, flex, hit enter. All right. And we're going to make this like an H3 tag. And above this um, tag, we're essentially going to put in uh, an input tag, which is going to be uh, going to be a checkbox. So input call the checkbox at enter uh, name is going to be completed in this case. Uh, we don't need an ID. And as you can see, we have one right here. But it's too small, as you can see. So we are going to put in a class name of let's say, uh, essentially going to give it a height of eight factor of eight, so like two rem. And then the width of eight rem as well. That is too big, so we're gonna give it uh, six and six. And then we also want to position this like smack dab in the middle right here, so it's not just floating above. And we can to do this, we just need uh, set the margin y to auto, so margin auto in the y direction, top and bottom. And as you can see, we see we fixed the problem, but we also need to space between uh, the check mark and buy groceries. Do this, we're just going to give uh, a margin left value of four. There you go. You have buy groceries. Uh, I want to go back here and add a description because um, one thing I forgot is that I also wanted uh, a script to add the description. So H4 uh, and give this uh, XL and for the color, it's going to be uh, oops. And for the color, it's going to be sort of like a light grayish color. So text gray 400 and closing tag. And right here inside of curly braces, we're going to put in tasks dot description. Enter. We also need to make sure that every single uh, every single like task, every single div has a key. It's also something that I really that I absolutely forgot about. So put in the task.id. Now there's one, there's one colossal mistake that I forgot to do. Uh, technically, um, this ID should not should not be here. Instead, we're gonna just uh, take all of this, and then we are gonna wrap uh, this div inside our uh, our uh, JSX uh, method. First, we're gonna set up React fragment. And then tasks dot map. And then inside here, every single task will render out the following as such. Another react fragment. Paste right here. And then this div right here. So, and then every single div inside will have a key of the task ID. If we hit refresh, we should no longer see this error. All right. Okay, cool. But still, we haven't added the uh, 
description because I put in tasks instead of task right here. So get rid of that. And now we have uh, buy groceries for the kitchen. All right, so everything is working just as expected. I'm going to select this to a P tag. Not that it matters really, but just for read readability. So that, I, that doesn't get confusing when I take a look at the source code again. This is going to be like an H4, 2XL. Okay. Oh, sorry. 2 non C. All right, here you go. Buy groceries for the kitchen. Last but not least, I want to add a horizontal line. It's just like a finishing touch right here. This horizontal line will have a class of border and then border and then a color border gray is going to be 400 closing tag. All right, we have a um, and then we have a horizontal line that divide that is placed uh, between one task and the other. But we also want to leave out some space right here, so we're going to put in a gap of uh, approximately four. Nope. All right, we're going to put a margin of four uh, up at top and bottom in the description. Same thing for the horizontal line. Actually, let's make this P tag to margin Y2. And uh, yeah, that is it for the site. Now, the only thing that is left is to um, place uh, the uh, is to place like two buttons, two uh, uh, icons for one for edit and one for uh, delete. And we're going to do that next time once we get into uh, deleting and editing tasks and creating new ones. But yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content, be sure to subscribe. And see you next time.